when I first went to the Munich show, it, it seems like miles and miles or uh, kilometers and kilometers of booths and people and uh, things out for sale. And there's, there was always this little niche off to the side as you walk down some aisle of incredibly beautiful things from Burma. And there'd be some jewels and some gems and some cultural artifacts and crystals among the best Burmese minerals that came out to the minerals market. And it took a few years for me to stop and, uh, and look at it. And this was uh, Federico Barlocher's uh, booth. And it was always sort of tucked away and maybe a little back from the other minerals and had the most beautiful things. So he has been going to Burma himself for decades and is one of the top sources for minerals and gems and carvings and artworks from Burma coming out into the trade. And he's going to tell us about a place that's dangerous, difficult to access, and yet has lots of good, beautiful things. So Federico, as soon as we get your computer up here and plugged in, it's yours. Today we will enjoy together. And uh, we will see the gemology and the mineralogy from a different point of view. Uh, the point of view of the miners. We will travel together to Mogok to understand in the world capital for top quality gemstone and for exclusive uh, minerals, exclusive items, how is difficult to find uh, such items and uh, what is the point of view of the miner? Not the point of view of the collector or the people, the Western people, but uh, which, kind, which effort they do the miner to arrive to find uh, the most exclusive gems in the world that are rubies. Now we will start together from the Mogok Valley. For the few that don't know, Mogok is uh, in Myanmar and is about 200 miles north from Mandalay. It's a historical location with 2,000 year history where half million people from the day that they burned, the day that they died, they think only gems. They breath, they eat, they work. The only idea is to become rich looking for the best rubies. This is a satellite photo to understand that the location is not only Mogok, it's not the town, but is a 25 kilometer for 50 kilometer. So it's a wide area, it's a huge area, where in the, all the valley inside this area, there are 1,200 mines. Not one, not 10, not 100, 1,200. And all kinds of gems, except, except emerald, are found in Mogok. This is to give you an idea, is the, uh, the location where we can understand very well from this location. Here is the marble ruby arc, is famous in all the world, where you can find the most beautiful rubies in mother rock. And today we will visit a mine here in Bo Padan. It's the unique video, never foreigner was allowed to make this video in this Bopadan mine. And you can see the, the blue are sapphire, the red point are rubies, and the color point are all the other type of gems. So the location is uh, very wide with many villages around. Mogok is still today, is closed at present because it's a restricted area and need special permission to visit. This is the way to go to Mogok. From Mandalay, all the local people use, this is the taxi, the classic taxi. And this is another way to go to Mogok, because everybody wants to arrive to Mogok. And here we have our hero that is arriving. Imagine David Wilbur in Mogok. <laughs> with he got success. Uh, he arrived there. Here is the view from the top. It's a unique view because it's from a helicopter. So there is a, a complete uh, wide uh, view of all the valley of Mogok. There are, in Mogok, have the power to change the mind of the people, have the, the power to change the character. 
everything is upside down. So uh, when you go to Morgok, you dream and you change yourself because it's like a dream, this place. And we can see here our friend uh, that make a film uh, become uh, like uh, a captain. And, uh, and our Wilbur become like J.R. Smoking, they never seen, looking rubies. This is the target of uh, our presentation today, the Katotec marble location. is the most interesting location in the world for ruby inside the mother rock. Here about 300 mines of every mine from 100 to 600, 700 workers are working only for look for rubies. This is the entrance of uh, our mine, is the Pride, Mogok Pride mine. And uh, how we can see very well is a well organized mine with all a research. Here we can see this is a unique, one of the few mines, and can say unique system in Mogok, that a part of the mine is a natural cave, and here are artificial tunnels. So we have a natural cave with secondary deposit on the bottom of the cave and the tunnels to arrive to this location. So they are working in marble and in, inside the natural cave. So primary and secondary. Here is, uh, you see, the small things that carry the rocks inside and out are like 100 years ago. This is a photo of 120 years ago very few things changing in the time, you see, is about the same. Look at this hat, this iron hat, because the national sport in every mine around the world is to steal. So to prevent stealing, the British that was, uh, was ruling Mogok 120, 150 years ago, they was putting this helmet with a little spot here open for look, so for not swallow a ruby and uh, run away and steal the rubies. This was a rule. You see, sorting ruby, all the people with helmet for not steal rubies. Because rubies have a high value. It's, it's enough uh, one small thing to, to make uh, hundred and hundred thousand dollars. This was the end of the people that were, didn't follow the rule 120 years ago. Now we enter. This is the mine. Now I make now a, a quick presentation of the mine because after there will be a nice movie that will explain everything. Cable, cable, it, but work. It's, it looks funny, it look, but uh, is uh, quite safe and is working. And this is a mine of about 100 fi uh, 150 people workers. This is the entrance of the mine, you see well prepared with light, uh, with a small train. So quite organized with electricity, carrying the material. These are wood uh, for security to keep, to keep the, the, the two marble uh, section don't uh, collapse each other. See how, how they prepare the system, very well organized. Uh, some mines, you have to go down vertical for 700 meters. So it's an incredible, uh, it like a Swiss cheese. So this is a 100 meter hole to arrive to the end of the mine. This you don't see, but it's Brian. Brian, a hero that for filming, he come down and he risk uh, his life because was not habit to these uh, small tunnels. With the camera, it's not also easy. See, here Brian with the camera, to carry the camera is very tough. Here like uh, a hunter, arrive to the end, have the camera like a weapon here, you know. Satisfy, uh, I arrive to the end. This is uh, the interesting part. Uh, one of the two, three mines in Mogok that this is a natural cave. So the water eroded the marble and formed a natural cave where at the bottom of the natural cave, here in the bottom, in the mud, 
they carry out the MAD and they find the rubies. They try to find the rubies. Here is the bottom of the natural cave. It's a unique situation in Mogok where they work both in primary and in the, the secondary natural cave. Here we are going in primary. This is the spot where they will put the dynamite. Here uh, you see the face like to touch a beautiful woman, but they are touching marble. No, it's like, ah, I arrive. My desire is satisfied. So here, here is very interesting and other things. The luck drive the life of uh, Myanmar people. So uh, religion, luck. So um, many minds, they put a Buddha in the location when they are working to wish good luck to find the best uh, ruby possible. And luck is a life motive of all the Myanmar people. So here the, the moment. The happy moment, you see a face like a child. Yeah? Find a small ruby, no value, but uh, find a small ruby, so happiness. We go outside the mine, because after, after carry the marble from inside the mine, you have to carry outside to broken and to look what is inside the marble, if, you, if we can find the rubies. So the big stones are broken in a smaller stone, that here are smaller stones that go up to the washing plant with the crushing machine. These are crushing machines that they split the marble in a, a, a smaller section to find the rubies. Here you see they carry the smaller section in the second crushing machine to uh, uh, make even more small the marble. You see here the marble is more small and here the marble they find the ruby. You see, it's a small point. This is uh, the catch of the day, nothing. 500 people, this mine. So you, from these things, you can see the rarity. This is the catch of the day, nothing to cut. And then the, there is uh, an investment unbelievable. Look at the marble pile on the back. And this is what got the miner happily. And these are tons of tons of marble to process and to broken. This is the mining production of 500, daily mining production. You see, when it's split in small part, there are the women, because the women is supposed that they have a better eyes, and the women, they check the small remaining part of marble. The last, the tiny marble are reject and give free to other women that reduce the marble in powder to find even tiny ruby, but this is a free, they are canazé, and this is a free looking. So you see, they split with the hammer, the small remaining marble, and this is the catch. Small rubies that have little value for us, but for them make the day, make the week, and uh, they can survive, these people. The safety box, safety box for gems. Because if you have a plastic bag, you can lose your gems. But if you put in the mouth, nobody will steal. So it's a habit for the local people to put the gems they found in the mouth. And the end of the day, they will have uh, everything safe and secure. Mogok is not only gems. It's a normal town where uh, the people enjoy. So we have Rubiland Football Club. Because the miner is mining, but they think about his team. They play in cards because they like to gambling. They enjoy to gambling and spend the money that maybe they sold the ruby, and in one hour they lose all the money for the ruby. They have a gym because they take care a lot about their body. So there is a complete life drunk because they like to drink a lot, because when they find something, they drink a lot. And here is something unique, golf club. See, they are poor? No, they are poor. They are rich people, they, they play golf. And beside the golf, there is one of the famous mines, Choupier. Five years ago, they moved the golf club, they mine inside the golf club, and after they put the golf club up. So any location is good for mining. Good luck, good luck for the monk. Monk religion uh, are 
full in the Myanmar life, and this, uh, some owner of the mine like to have a monk on the top of his mine to wish good luck to him. So you see these small houses is uh, good luck. One second. This small house is uh, good luck for the crushing machine to find the good rubies. And here is a rich miner that has 700 uh, employment workers, and uh, he makes his small Buddha box with the ruby that he considered good luck for him found in his mine. You see, it's nothing special, but a rare piece anyway because they're difficult to find. And he put the best one on the hand of the Buddha, like a donation, like uh, the Buddha helped him in the future. This is uh, about one month production of a marble mine, and this is one year production of the marble mine. You see many rubies, but maybe not even one is of true gem quality. So it can be cabochon, can be carving, can be many things, but the true good stone may be in this uh, 2 kg of ruby, it's one or two maximum. So now we will go together to see a complete uh, movie that uh, I think will make uh, happy all the people because with the movie is much more quick and it is uh, easy to understand all the process. And uh, we will go to this uh, Mogok Pride Mine to understand uh, all the system, how it's possible to find and which effort they do the people to find the rubies. Uh, for make pleasure to our Chinese guests, we make also a subtitle in Chinese. So the people that uh, like Chinese, they can understand the movie. Deep in the heart of one of the most isolated countries in the world. lies a legendary valley few Westerners have ever seen. A valley where the past has been shrouded by secrets. Where the spirit of mankind has fallen and soared. And where the legends of mystery give way to the promise of adventure. Dear friends, we are here today in Bopadan. We will go together to visit one of these incredible ruby mines in Mogok. Bopadan, another top location in Mogok for uh, rubies, marble mines. In Bopadan, in one important mine, and uh, we will go together to visit inside the mine. There, there is the entrance with my friend, and uh, here we go to meet together the owner of the mine. Bopadan, paradise with Katotek in Mogok for rubies in Mother Rock. This is a natural, natural cave. Natural cave? Yeah, but here is a big pool. So this is big investment? Uh, yeah. Still from here, is a, they, they are working up to now, it's about oh, 15 years. Yeah. From here to here yeah, is yeah, six, 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 years. Years. Nine. Oh, three to there, yeah, three, three, three down. Yeah, oh, three, okay. three. So first year, six, and then another, uh, a, a nine, and another six. Yes. Uh, okay. So yeah. here there is the ruby marble band, no? Yes. Yeah. With a ruby, a ruby vein, theoric vein, because there is no pocket. Yeah. yeah. Random, random. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
Super. Here we can see. This we can see very clearly. This is another step to go down. Here we have the ruby, ruby marble for the the best rubies in the world. This is the ruby, ruby place, ruby home, the marble, the calcite, the famous Modoc calcite. You see, they are carrying the material to take out from the mine. Beautiful, they are working up there. Here coming down the material, we can see, here is the fresh material. We have a fresh fruit from the mine. Now, now, this is the, in this moment, they have the production. Here we see the production now. They, you see, they close the back so nobody can steal. You see? This is the marble yes, that marble. they will broken outside. Inside the, ruby. Uh, inside the ruby. Here they find the best ruby in the world. Yes. We don't know where, but inside yeah, the here the, they, they will uh, chop. You chop uh, with hammer of yeah. crushing machine. Yeah, machine is the machine, outside. crushing, outside. crushing machine. Oh, yeah. Looking in the back, he found uh, here. Uh, no ruby. No ruby. Daji, this, Daji. Uh, near the ruby. Near the ruby. This is mica, probably. Is a close, uh, close to the ruby. They are very, very close to the ruby in this moment. Yeah, Michael, Michael. He is a chief operator of the chief. Mine. We have a chief operator of this mine. Ah, ah. <laughs> okay, we continue our trip. This uh, upstairs. Upstairs. It's the loo. The loo, eh? Yes. Exactly. So the loo. So they they take out the loo. Gravel. They carry this uh, gravel, we can say gravel, from the uh, holes inside the natural cave. This is uh, now arrived to the 450 feet from the top. From the top. First, they are Step from the 2007, they are, they are working, going down step by step. About now it's a 450. Here, this area, they can got the one big pocket. One big pocket of ruby. We cannot say pocket because they're not really pocket, but a, a position where ruby was very consistent. In Katotec, uh, the working time is 24 hours each group. And here? Yeah, the, the, the first group is uh, start from the morning 7 a.m. to the evening 5 p.m. 5 p.m. After that, they, have, they give the interval time. Oh, one uh, night long. Oh. After that, they were about the 6.30, they were going down the second group up to the, the next morning 7. 7. And they continue like that? Yeah. So two to groups. Shift. Yeah. Two groups, they continue to shift. Yeah. OK, a little different than Bopadam. Which are then Katotec, and this is uh, his style uh, working uh, yeah. with the miners. This is uh, the first, the first mine from the going from the top. From the top. Now we are going. Uh, all mine. This is an old mine. All and mine. Left 15 years ago, they set them in this area. We are going on the top here. On the top is about 30 meters, and we will see what happened. Here we are up. We can see very well, we, all the team is coming up. There they are working. We found, we found the spot. The miners are working for Ruby there. Super. We are in the deep of the mine. In the hot point of the mine, where the best ruby in the world are found. Okay, okay. Here they are putting the dynamite, dynamite, the dynamite candle. Okay. 
You see, this is the moment that they put the dynamite and after they broken all the calcite. Boom! You are close to the blasting. Incredible! <laughs> the air! Boom! Boom the air! Okay, here you can see the smoking there, up there. It's coming out. It's very clear now. Here the marble is coming up. Fresh marble! You see? Cave everywhere. Fantastic. Here there is the, the miner. Downstairs, they are on spot. Now we go up. Up, 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 up. We go up there. It's a true cavern, this. Incredible cavern. Here they are walking downstairs. We come up from these stairs. And here, you see, this is a natural cave. Here we are in a natural cave inside the marble mine because Mogok uh, it's a Karsik place with uh, plenty of natural caves so they are working down here where collect where the material collect uh, was eroded in millions of years so they they take the bottom of the cave the sand that is in the bottom is like secondary mine but in fact uh, is the still a primary mine. Here we are, in the same, in a natural cave, in the same natural cave, and here we can see very clearly from the mud, this is like secondary, they call it in Burmese Lu, Lu Win. It's like they are working on the bottom of the natural cave, so all the marble eroded from the cave in millions of years deposit on the bottom inside the mud. So they take out the mud to clean to find the rubies. Rubies in Bopadan, primary and secondary. This is the secondary deposit. <laughs> Fantastic visit. We have a primary and secondary deposit in the same mine. It's interesting to say that in this natural loo, so in this secondary deposit, all the rubies are small. The reason is very simple why the rubies are small in the natural cave. Because the water that erode the marble carry the rubies and the rubies, they tumble each other and they become small, they broken each other. So in this secondary deposit, only small rubies. So rough, good for cut, but not good for crystal. Small, high quality rubies. In this natural low wind cave in Bopadan. With the view of the miner and our friends, that come out from this black hole, the magic ruby hole. We start to see the exit of our mine. It's a really long process, hard work to find these small, incredible, valuable gems, rubies. 
the most rare, precious gem in the world of color gemstones. Much more rare even than diamonds. Now we are nearly, very nearly to come out from the mine. This visit was really fascinating, educative, and true. This is the true life of the workers in this uh, super well-organized mine in Mogok. Here we have our miner, our miners. These are the like a small train, like a, a dreaming train for rubies of Indiana Jones. Here we are. Ah, Bopadan, Mogok, and now we go to see the crushing machine with the owner of the mine. Mogok Pride Tunnel. Now, we go to the other side of the mine to see the crushing, uh, crushing machine. Here we are, the mines. This bamboo divides each mine. Here we can see is, uh, the town of Marble, the world capital of Ruby, Mogok. Here we have the best view because we are in the top of this bridge. Bridge in the, here we can see very well the bags, the bags f that from the up they go down, down deep in the earth, 400 meters, and after they return back full of calcite where they try to find the rubies. You see, we enter in the mine, the situation is completely different than two months ago. Full of big marble. Here inside, they are looking for rubies. Look the piece, how they are big. Best place in the world to find the rubies in Mother Rock. Very hard work. Very, very hard work. See? The big piece of marble must be split in a smaller piece to enter in the crashing machine. Football Federation of Rubyland. Here we are in a better position to see all the process. The material is ready here to come up. Arrive the new calcite here. the crashing machine there. Here I'm with all the miners. Mogok, the dream for Ruby, is here. And this, very important, is the good luck, Buddha good luck, to find the good rubies. So they are working with uh, the good luck place. The worker starts. Now they start to work. Here there is the manager. The manager that they control 
is, there is a sun ruby here. They are controlling all the production. He controls that nobody steal. Here there is the crashing machine that uh, broken in a more small piece the marble. They found a ruby in this moment! Incredible! With the manager. This man control the worker. This man control all the worker. Kaune! Here we have uh, what they found. They found the ruby. Now, also here a ruby. 400 people working in this mine. 400. And we can see the production of the day. In incredible. Very difficult to find rubies. Very, very difficult. And in this position, they are controlling all the rubies that pass. After crashing, here they found the rubies. Here, dear friend, is the box where they find Ruby. He, he will open for us. Here we can see the, the daily find of rubies. So after the crashing machine, they collect all the rubies. Jezube, thank you. And after they discharge the marble here. Very, very interesting. Very beautiful. The marble go up there. Crashing machine go down. First selection. Here, after first selection, go down to the second selection. And after, free to the people on the track. On the track here, go free to the people. So we see all the gem mining production. Here we are with the miner with uh, his production is uh, showing ruby ruby kaune uh, you see how it's difficult to find ruby how many day one day this production two days two days production nothing 500 people working for two days with no production incredible lose the game lose the game this is a unique chance to see how they found the ruby. See? Here we have the negative, original negative. Up and down. We have the positive with the ruby. Unique, incredible chance. Before to broken the marble is like that and after very l rarely they are so lucky to find rubies inside the marble. Okay. This is a special occasion. It's the first time that I have the two part, negative and positive, and ruby in the middle. Mogok, the world paradise for rubies. Mogok, the legendary valley of rubies. So now we will go to the... Thank you a lot. We will go to the last part. That to understand better what they found, how they trade the uh, ruby crystal and the rubies. This is a selection of uh, ruby that from many mines and is the best of uh, one month. So these are exceptional piece, especially this one, but look perfect, but in reality on the back is broken. 
So it's anyway rare, but to find a piece not broken, it's really something unbelievable because the dynamite broken the marble, but broken also the rubies and the crushing machine too. So to find the rubies intact is a really like to win the lottery. Don't look at the ruby, look at the face. These have experience. He burned and then when he have two years, three years, he understood the ruby. So the face in one second, he understand what he have in the hand and he's looking at crystal and he compare the crystal with his two master stone inside his ring, a ruby and sapphire. This is another expert, because the fever of ruby catch everybody, and also the Wilber was inside this fever. And look at the eyes of David. <laughs> you won't take me and my stone, I kill you. This is my ruby. When he discovered that somebody was making a photo, he became happy. It's only a photo. This is another one that take the fever of Ruby, Brian, want to eat them. <laughs> but the, the true speciality of Dave uh, is truly eating, uh, and he likes too much. Look when he is eat. But even the Burmese understood, and they give the red flag to him. Stop to eating. <laughs> this uh, is a classic situation. It's the daily market how to trade the rubies in Mogok, because it's the biggest market in the world. Half a million people, they try every day rubies. And this is how it happened 120 years ago. The style is the same, nothing changed. This in the house, when you trade more privately, more expensive items, so you go in private house, look the window, the window is to have the best light to check carefully with the best possible light all the problems of the rough. And still the instrument, this is a photo of uh, seven years ago, is the instrument are the same instrument of 150 years ago. This is an old photo of 100 years ago. Same style. It's like a place where the time never change. You enter in the time machine. Mogok is truly a time machine where the true become a lie and the lie become a true. And you don't know which kind of solution to take because everything is possible. This is the old way to trade the rubies secretly, to not give the price with the fingers touching each other covered by a, a cotton wrap. So the buyer and the seller can communicate and make offer and counter offer before to make the final decision. So the people in the room don't know the price. This is an old tradition that sometimes, even today, happen. Look, these are the Mogok dealer. Look the face. No, you will gi give the key of your home to these people, eh? sure. Look at this, and look at this. It's a cat face. <laughs> and this is uh, his friend. <laughs> Look, eh? there are not, even the cat in Mogok are clever. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's true. And this is the icon, Bill Larsen. is a true icon. He's a true expert of Burma. But compared to this one, it's innocent. He's an innocent pupil, an innocent boy, because uh, to defend it from these people, these people have 20, 30 years, but they have a lifetime experience. All the day, all the year, they know how to trade a ruby. So they make X-ray on the buyer. So they know exactly, they make the price looking on the face of buyers and they are very intelligent, very clever people. They are smiling, they are polite, but when you deal, it's really difficult. <laughs> Even with this one, very difficult. And this, that uh, is a very expert, now, when have to deal with these people, Bill, also Bill have problem because it's not easy. This is 150 years ago. They think Mogo people, they don't know how to cut gem wrong. There are 1,100 cutters in Mogo. 
and they are the most expert cutters in the world for rubies. They know exactly what to get the maximum possible a bigger and beautiful stone from the rough. So there, there are no cutters in the world that can work like Mogok cutters. This uh, is Nagak ruby, it's the most famous ruby in the history and uh, was 77 carat. And it's an old painting that showed the Burmese uh, people, important people, that was offering to the French ambassador. That French ambassador understand nothing and is very politely, very softly, he was trying his deal. And this is the supposed ring of the Nahuatl ruby. This is a 10 carat ruby, a 10 carat ruby pigeon blood, the, uh, the called famous pigeon blood from Burma. Uh, pigeon blood is a color of dream. Uh, you have to see before to understand what is truly pigeon blood, because the photo don't give the reality. But to give an idea, a 10 carat ruby that is uh, long like our nail can cost 10 million dollars. So a 20 carat ruby is, uh, was in uh, Christie's at 30 million dollars. So the price of this ruby is crazy, but is still cheap compared to the work done in the mines. Because uh, there are 400 mines with each mine from 150, 700 workers only working for ruby. The investment is about 300 to 400 million dollars each year, year only for rubies. So at the end, few rubies, they make such price and are cheap compared to the work that uh, is involved in mining uh, rubies. So rubies is by far, uh, by far even uh, for crystal, is the most exclusive item in the world of gems and crystals. And few collectors can have top gems or top uh, crystal of rubies. This is a classic, is a photo, but is a true pigeon blood, where the color is a pure red with a small tinge, very small, tiny tinge of purplish. But it's difficult to describe. You have to see, and when you see, they open your heart, and you understand that this is the pigeon blood. This is a, a rare item. It's a collection of uh, rubies of uh, size from 6, 5, 4, 3 carat, and uh, really it's a rare item, uh, rare necklace of uh, rubies. This is interesting for the mineral collector, how they have found the big, rare few big rubies. This is 25 kg that come directly from this mine that we saw before, the Pride Mine. So it's a piece of rough that come out after the explosion, and this is the final result after trimming in the lab. So from 25 kg to 300 grams. And it is really a huge work, not easy work to, to do even in the lab. This is another rare crystal, the piece how is big when it's found after blasting the dynamite. And this is the final result of the trimming. This is another piece, you see, the condition of the piece, final result. So there is a, a huge difference, a lot of work, uh, even to prepare a piece that uh, look interesting uh, in an aesthetical point of view. This is another crystal, after with the official photo, and after in a China show, to see the, the different stage of uh, the crystal. These are loose crystal, because a few crystal uh, remain in mother rock, so most of the crystal lose the mother rock and are broken, and the not, bro the not few broken crystal, this is one a very high quality sample. This is the history, is uh, Edward Gubelin. Gubelin is the history of Ruby. This is the grandson of Gubelin that come to Mogok, and see, this is Gubelin, Edward, the original one, they look the same. <laughs> This uh, is 1995, before he passed away, with uh, a famous ruby, the Mogok Sun. And this is the ruby with the official photo, with a very rare tabular crystallization. And this uh, comes uh, from Datto Mine, this ruby. This, uh, when I saw in 1996 uh, after Gubelin, 
and it is when I both the piece, you see, in the mines there is one rule, no credit card, only cash. Without cash there is no way to take uh, any kind of gems of minerals. It's enough, uh, one shake of hand and the deal is done. This is how rubies are important. Okay, this is uh, in uh, China, in Changsha Shou, this is the king of Mogok. So they, they push the ruby because they know that are exclusive items. And this is the king of Mogok that Brian made a, a video. This one is the official photo. And here the passion of ruby. After going in the mine, this is the final result. Completely destroyed. <laughs> but for me, the most beautiful photo is I love you, Ruby, done in Ruby. But the last photo is the most beautiful. Look, David. Happy to be in paradise. To be in Mogok is uh, smiling and uh, he satisfied his dreams to see the Mogok mines and rubies. Thank you to everybody with this last <laughs> slide. Wonderful. Nice.